Hi there, I'm Don Daly, also the Sunday wood carver. Today we're going to carve a little gnome just like this. Painting will not be part of it, but we'll be carving everything else to be ready to paint. And we're going to start with a piece of wood about like this, square, rectangular, whatever. This is maybe an inch and a quarter by an inch and a half and about eight inches long. I go to the bandsaw and I take off a lot of the waste so I just don't have to carve all that off by hand, but you can hand carve it. And today I'm carving Spanish cedar, which is very lightweight. Uh, it's easy to carve. Here's the next stage where I've partially taken off some of the sawn edges and started to decide on where the hat and the nose is going to be. And here's one that's just about carved in the round. Just needs a little detail cleanup work. And then it needs to have the hairs on the beard and the mustache carved. So if we look at the finished gnome as a reference, we're going to want to decide where the little cap ends and then we want to start with our nose. Okay, you can see here I have this reserved for the nose. So you always want to start with the part that sticks out the furthest. So the nose and then you want to have the mustache, which is the next level if you look in profile. And then the beard, the hands are kind of there. Everything else is in line with that. The, the jacket will be set back from the beard. You want to end the bottom of his jacket so that you can show where the boots are. Okay, so the style that I'm doing for these, uh, you can look at both of these. They, there's no eyes, there's just the nose. And it, it makes it a little more ambiguous. What kind of expression, what's he thinking, you know. It's also easier on this small scale because it's difficult to carve eyes on this very small scale. <clears throat> so this is going to be, let's say, the bottom of the nose right here. And the nose is only going to stick out a little bit. So right there is, say, the top of the nose. So that's going to be the bottom of the cap. Now I usually go kind of straight. You can have it come down a little bit at the back. So like it's sloping down the back of his neck. Okay, so then we want to start taking some of this material off to take these corners off here. And I'm using uh, a basic push cut. So if you look at my video that's called Basic Cuts, this is one of the cuts that you use. So my thumb is firmly behind the blade, this thumb, and then my other thumb is behind that, is actually pushing it as I squeeze with this hand. So. This thumb right here is pushing the blade. I'm not trying to slice it with my whole arm. I'm just controlling the cut. Notice how I can just stop very easily and just make a short cut there. Okay, so that's a way of carving safely and quickly. Now, right now you'll notice, I know somebody's gonna notice that I'm not wearing a carving glove. But for this part of it and for this project, I'm gonna go without it since I'm making a video. But I strongly suggest that you do wear a carving glove. Find one that fits your hand snugly so that you'll actually wear it. Trust me, I have the scars to prove how important it is to wear a carving glove. So this is the process. I just keep spinning it around in my non-carving hand, which is my left hand, and just keep taking low angle cuts here. Now the top you want to go, you know, the top of his cap is a point, but you don't want it so pointy that it's going to break off afterwards. So it's kind of a blunt point. All I'm doing here, this is called roughing out. I'm just getting rid of a lot of material here. And I'm also trying to establish 
uh, around here, kind of a roundish hat, you know, the bottom of the hat to match his head. Now, one thing as you're carving, <clears throat> you'll find that you often need to redraw your little lines. So I'm carving my, my little marks that I was using to guide myself. Now we can start to do a little bit of a slope to the nose right here, but just kind of down to where the hat is and then it's gonna be tucked under the hat. So you don't wanna take off any more here than you <clears throat> want to for the uh, front of the hat. And as I get closer to the shape I want, I take smaller and smaller and shallower cuts. And I'm going, you know, very quickly now just to get you guys through this process. You can take as much time as you need. Okay, so now I'm going <clears> to <throat> regroup here and redo my line that I had drawn in for the cap. And a lot of times I'll come around one side, come around the other side and just sort of meet in the back so that at least you don't have it uh, out of whack that way. Now the other thing is that I want to decide how wide my nose is going to be. So that's going to be about like that wide. I'm going to, you know, I have an imaginary, you can actually draw this line in, just draw a center line with the nose and draw it right down because then that can be uh, where your front of your feet are going to be, right? So you keep those centered off that line. And then also when you do your mustache, that's going to be centered off that line also, okay? So now the first thing we're going to do here is take a stop cut like that, also in the basic videos, and then a push cut remove it so you could call this whole thing as a stop cut so you, you slice straight in and then you cut up to it and then you just chop down in now I have the bottom of the nose and then I want to come around the bottom of the hat now for this I can come straight in or I can angle it down a little bit I don't want to angle up under it because what's going to happen Especially with this wood, this Spanish cedar, it, it's going to flake off, it's going to chip. So you want to make sure you keep it maybe angled down just a degree or two toward the bottom. And I'm just making little cuts here. You don't want to do a whole slicing cut. It's a good chance of that blade jumping off and cutting you. So now I've gone all the way around with that cut and I can start to just take a little bit, just a little notch there just to uh, indicate the bottom of the hat. And then also the nose is going to come up underneath that. And I go back in sometimes to just deepen that straight cut. So now already you can see the nose is starting to come under there. And then now you have to very quickly now decide what kind of nose do you want to do. Do you want to have uh, a nose like this that kind of looks like a nose but there's not really any nostrils. This is a simplified nose profile. This one I don't have a lot of detail. You see I have a little bit bigger one. This is one of the other ones I started. So I want to start to take this material out. Set up how deep the bridge is going to go under the hat and then how big and what shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to make kind of like a, a bulb shape there. So back to this one that we're working on. So I want to take this corner off right there. A lot of what I'm doing right now is to remove some material but not so much that some of it starts to break away and then I can't I can't go back. Now I'm making a little straight in cut just on the side of the nose. 
I can always make this narrower if I want or a steeper angle, but that's the sort of the side of the nose. And then right up under, under the hat here, I want to come straight in. So what I'm trying to do is I'm carving a little triangle like this, a little inverted pyramid. So I come down here. So right there, right here is going to be the deepest part of that cut. And then I'm going to come in and take that little chip out. So now that gives you the little uh, deeper shadow part where kind of the beginning of the eye would be right there. So we have to remember to stop every once in a while and think about what we're going to do next. And remember how I said in the profile we have different levels that we want to maintain. So the nose and then the mustache and so forth. Also in here we need to leave a little material for the cheeks. See how we're going to take out right here where the eye would start to be? We have to make sure we keep cheeks in there. So let's look at this model. You see how there's an area here where this part is the next level down from the nose. It's roughly even with the mustache. So the way we're going to achieve a roundness to the cheeks is by taking out a lower spot that makes it look like it's high. We can't raise what's not there, but we can make it look higher than the part behind it. So in order to achieve parts of the face looking like they're higher than others, you have to take a space that's next to that and cut back down in. And a lot of times it's just these little triangle shapes like I showed you here, where the lowest point is right there and we're cutting like a little pyramid out. So let's sketch out the mustache. Now I'm going to do the mustache coming right from the bottom of the nose and then angling down like that. That's going to be the mustache shape. I'll do both sides just to... I'm going to have to redraw this several times. So now this area right here gets cut deeper and that creates the mustache, but it also creates the lowest point where you're going to have the, che the uh, cheek. So again, I go in on an angle like that. I go in on an angle like that and then just take that corner out. So that little pyramid, inverted pyramid right there, is starting to create the cheek right there and also the mustache. So if I do another little triangle right here, and I'm forcing the point right straight, right in on an angle, and then I just come in and pop that out. So now you can see I'm starting to get a little bit of a, a shape. So now I'm defining the top of the mustache with a couple little V cuts here, like that. So now I know where the mustache is going to be. Here's This is going to be the cheek and I, I start to take a little bit of that off to round it over. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to indicate the front part of the beard or the sideburn like on this one, this little piece right here and that'll help define the cheek also. So if I just draw that shape like that and I do it on both sides Now I know where that cheek is going to end. So I'm just going to come down with a straight cut like that. There's another little triangle right there. And then a little cut right along that. And that defines the cheek and that little bit of a sideburn. Now sometimes you have to rotate around so that you can if you're not ambidextrous like me then you have to rotate your carving. So now at any time I want I can start to shave a little bit of this away to make it look more like a nose. And it's a good idea to try to keep your those little triangles and all your little stop cuts as clean as you can as you carve rather than have to come back and clean everything up later. It's a lot easier. 
So now you can start to see I have a cheek outlined a little bit. I, the one side of the nose is starting to round a little bit and I'm establishing this little kind of a sideburn right here. And this is all little triangular chip cuts that were taken out here. Okay. Now, depending upon how you want to make your uh, character look, I usually have this part of this little sideburn or the beard. I lower this down so it looks like it's going sort of behind the mustache. Okay. Now, as you go, you need to start taking out, taking off all this rough from the saw cuts. And I'm also establishing the edge of the hat and how much hat, what the thickness of the hat over the, you know, the character is. How much does it stick over the hair and the face and all that. And you do have to be careful right here at the bottom of these little, where it flakes off a little bit. So I am trimming that. And then what you can do here is kind of angle it just a little bit and that'll make that material. Again, the Spanish cedar is very easy to chip, so I'll just angle that a little bit and it'll make it much stronger and won't flake off on you. So now you can see I'm getting into an area where there's going to be some hair in the back of it. Let's go back to this character. Here's the hair in the back, which will be, you know, cut down even more. Um, it could be just straight down like that. You can have a little curl to it. You can have it tuck under like a page boy, whatever you want to do there. And all that's going to be done before you put the details of the, the hairs on there. So you want to create sort of the outer shape of the hair first. So now that's the next thing on this. So let me finish all the way around. Okay, let's look at this amount here and let's take out this little corner. All right, now again, we have to do the mustache like that. We'll take this little triangle out right here. And that starts to create the cheek. And then whatever this distance here, we want to go roughly the same over here for the cheek. Right, right in here. And then that'll give us where the sideburn is going to be and where the cheek is going to be. I made a straight cut in here. Again, taking out the corner. Now I have to find the top of the cheek with the sideburn, which is here. Round that in like that. And then at the bottom here, you know, your cheek isn't pointed, so you gotta kind of round that. So see how we create these negative spaces with the little triangles with one there, one there, one there. And then that helps you to create a dome shape for that you want for the cheek. And you're going to do a similar thing with the nose. You're going to just keep breaking the corners, little tiny chips, smaller and smaller. Now what you have to be careful is on this scale, this is a really small scale. And actually, if you compared it to human scale, this nose would be huge, right? It'd be a gigantic nose, but it's a caricature. So what we want to do is keep in mind that even the slightest change to the shape of that nose is going to be really, really dramatic. It's going to really completely change the look of this thing. So I'm going for a very round bulbous nose, almost about the same size as the cheeks here. Now under, where the mustache and the nose and the cheek meet, there's another triangle right there. That's a deep one. So that little shadow right there that's created by that cut really defines the shape of the face and it makes it interesting to look at. And then the, the 
each part that you're carving can be then rounded and so forth. Now here's another spot uh, where the beard, cheek, and mustache intersect. Another triangle right there. So what you do is you just, just plunge it right in like that. You plunge that in like that. And we leave the cut like that. Okay, so that's the deepest point there. And then you're going to kind of ease it under the mustache like that. And round the mustache like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to say, how wide do I want my sideburn section to be? So I'm going to say maybe a quarter of an inch or a little more than a quarter of an inch. Like about like that. Okay. And then let's talk about where the beard is going to end. So down here, I want my feet about this height. Now on this one, I have the feet are right underneath the bottom of the coat. It goes almost all the way to the ground. On this one, I raised it up so I had boots showing. So that's a choice you can make. All these little options, you know, give you a lot of leeway for varying your, your uh, character design. Now I'm taking a little bit of a notch underneath the bottom of the mustache because I'm going to round off, clear off some of this and I don't want to accidentally lop off my mustache. So another triangle right here, one that way, one that way. So that's sort of where the mouth would be. In this character there really isn't a mouth, the mustache covers it. Again, it's a caricature, but if you wanted to put a bottom lip that would be easy enough to do. And as you go, keep stopping and looking and making sure you didn't take too much off. It can be a little bit lopsided. You know, human faces are lopsided. But you don't want to make, make people say, why is that mustache so different on the left and the right? So now I took off under the mustache. And I did that so that I can now take off some of this material and stop there and not go and lose all that. Now, you want to decide, do you want the mustache to go straight down? Do you want it to curve under or do you want to kind of curl up a little bit? So we're going to make this one sort of curl up a little bit. So I'm not going to take too much off here and I'm going to go lower toward the top of the beard. So if you can see, this is kind of a little sweep that way. and make sure that I define it, you know, at the bottom of that mustache, get rid of that. Okay, so now what I'm doing right now is I'm taking off the high spots and the, the facets left by the bandsaw so that I can draw on it for the beard. I'm just trying to get rid of most of this material. This is a little tricky here. You gotta control your cut. Make sure you don't break off that point, which is fragile. See all this rough material here from the saw? I want to get rid of that. So I'm just rounding that over. Uh, it's actually a good practice just right from the beginning to do that over the whole thing. Just get rid of all the saw marks and the facets. Now at some point here, what's going to happen is you're going to start noticing you don't get as clean a cut and you might have to go the other way. So that's, you just have to be aware of if and when and where that grain starts to change direction. Okay. All I'm doing is I'm trying to round this, uh, smooth this off a little bit, level it, so that I have a canvas to sort of draw out my details. So around the bottom of this uh, sideburn near the mustache, you got to be very careful not to break off the point of that mustache or you're going to have to redesign the whole mustache. Okay, so now this is all kind of shaped all around here. So now here's where I wanted my sideburn to end right there on either side. And then I'm going to say my beard is going to come down to here. Okay, that gives me a little bit of room for the boots and a little bit of coat under here. Also, if I want to put a belt or a rope belt or something, I can. So now I want to clear this tip of the mustache. So I'm going to stay out here. 
and I'm going to come down and meet down here. And that's going to be the shape of my beard. It's going to be kind of rounded at the bottom. I'm going to do the other side the same way. I'm staying away from the mustache here about the same as up here. About a quarter of an inch right there. And this is going to make it easier to define the mustache and separate it from the beard and then the body. Now another thing I have to think about is if I want some arms. So here you see I have some arms and an easy way to do this is to kind of tuck them under the beard because if you do it like this one where the hands are on the outside, first of all you have to leave enough material for the hands, second of all you have to worry about carving the hands and on this scale that's tricky. So you'll notice there's little chips there. It's, it's, it's hard because you're going, the grain is this way, very weak grain there. So an easier simplified way on this is to just sort of tuck it under the beard like that. And you're going to put the shoulder kind of between where this hair is and the beard. Now, if you look at your own shoulder and you look at your own mouth, obviously your mouth is way above your shoulder. So if we were doing this anatomically correct, we would put the shoulder like way down here and the arm would be down in this area. But this is a foreshortened figure and it's a little gnome, so, you know. So what we're gonna do is put our, sh our shoulder, say, right in here, just above the mustache. So I'm gonna come around and do it over here. Look at it, make sure it's sort of lined up, okay? Now I'm gonna go right here where the sideburn ends and I'm gonna start the hair. And I'm gonna bring the hair around. There's gonna be a little triangle here, okay? Let's look at this one. See that little triangle carved out? So that's a low spot, and there's another one here. And they actually help define the arm. Then the back, you're just relieving material underneath. Okay, so now let's do that on the other side. Here's the, the shoulder, and the hair is gonna come down like that. Now you see the hair is here, and it's here. I'm just going to connect it. So now I've defined sort of where the hair is going to be, and I've defined where the arm is going to be. And always make the arm a little fatter than you think you need to make it. You can always trim it down. And again, look at this. It's way toward the back here. Your elbows don't meet that way. But again, it's just for to give the illusion. Now you can either come straight in, or you can have the arm uh, either tilted up a little bit or down, which is... Makes it look a little more natural. So I like to go like that, a little downward angle. Here's our elbow right there. So I'm gonna come down. So that's gonna be my arm. And then I wanna decide sort of a thickness of the arm and create that little triangle right there. So now you see I created an illusion of an arm. It doesn't really look like a real arm, but it actually will when you look at this figure. So I want to, at some point, score around that line. And this is actually a really safe way to do it where I'm resting it on my carving surface. I can press down, my hand's nowhere near it, I'm not going to slip. You know, the danger in carving is when you start putting too much pressure on the knife and then when it slips, it finally gives way. Then if there's a piece of flesh in the way, namely your body, that's not good. So now I'm starting to just, I'm just breaking this part that's under the jacket all the way around because I want the jacket material to stay where it is. Anyway, so that's the bottom of the jacket. There's a couple things I could do if I wanted to. I could put a belt here, do a little buckle, and make a belt go around. Again, I could use that tool to draw that line. Uh, I'm not going to on this one, but I do have the arms here, so I want to carve those, and I want to outline my beard. So now I'm going to go about doing that.
So, okay, what I did was I roughed out where the arm is going. You're still gonna have to bring the plane of the arm down a little bit so it looks like it tucks under the beard. It only has to be a little bit, and then you wanna round this, round these edges so it looks like a round arm shape. Okay, one little detail you can give if you want to, to show sort of the crease in the sleeve is you can just give two little V cuts like that. Just like that. Now it looks like the sleeve has a wrinkle in it. And then you want this little triangle here to be pretty deep. Like that, to show that. So that you can round this over and make it look like it's going in underneath the beard. Just, again, smaller and smaller. As you get close to the round shape, you're just taking smaller and smaller chips. Also here, I was indicating as I was doing the sped up version where these little triangles are. So this little pyramid idea of cutting a little triangle, that's, there's one here. This one has three. There's one there. There's one right here. All these places where you want a deep lower area for a shadow and it gives the illusion of three dimension. Okay, so that's how the arm would be. Then of course, once you cut this down, you're gonna have a, a hump here. So you gotta sort of bring this up into it. So it looks like a piece of, uh, like a coat, you know, might hang out here over his hips or whatever. So you can do whatever you want there. Now in the sped up section, you notice I worked on the feet a little bit. So what I wanna do is take this line that came down through the nose and that's, we're lining up the feet, so that's a, a front to back line right there. And then I just sort of freehand uh, a shoe, a bottom of the shoe, and then the other side. And if they're not perfectly symmetrical, again, it's a little carving of a gnome, it doesn't really matter. So I wanna come back in from the bottom of this coat a little bit. And basically what I was doing was using this line to just sort of get the outline of the bottom of the shoe like this. And right now I'm going with the grain, uh, I'm going in the right direction grain wise. If it was sort of chipping off, I'd have to somehow go this way, but right now I'm, I'm in good shape. I want to create a little V between the two shoes like that. And then here's going to be another little triangle to take out there. Okay. Now in the back, I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. And I want to, now I want to angle this in so that it looks like the shoe is going up under the skirt. I'm working on the back of the shoes right now. And I'm leaving a little area here that's, I don't want it to be a, a sharp angle here. I'm going to round that off, but I want to stop about an eighth of an inch in or some amount where I leave a little bit of something there. Now in the front, I wanna make it look like it's a shoe like this. So I wanna come up under there, uh, sort of like this one. I wanna come in and then like it's going up. The only difference between this one is this coat is farther down. You don't see the legs. So I wanna come straight in like that cut that off and then work my way around so that it gives it kind of a round shape. Okay. And then the middle is a little three pointed cut. So then I can come back as much as I want as little or so it looks like the part of the foot and back of your toes goes back a little bit. So there we have like a little boot shape. And then of course I can just round this off if I want. I can also round this so the boot kind of tucks under a little bit. All right, so that's how we do the boot. But let's just say I, I want to carve a belt. So I'm gonna make a, again, down the middle, lined up in here, I'm gonna make a little, either a rectangle or a square and that would be my buckle right there. Now, when I do the belt, the buckle is going to be the highest part. 
the coat's going to be back lower than that, and the belt itself is also going to be lower than the buckle. I can always freehand this, this line, but it's easier if I use this thing. So now I want my buckle to be out farther and also wider than the belt itself. So there's my belt, bottom of my belt. And here's the top of my belt. This is going to be a pretty skinny belt. So now the belt's drawn in. So if I were going to carve this, I would score the, the belt and cut away from it. Now I would have this lower, then I would cut the belt. Now the two ways you can go with the belt. One is the belt is sticking on top of the jacket and it's sticking out. Another way is that the belt is actually lower than the jacket and the jacket tucks in on either side. Oops, I took too much off there, okay. So I chipped off some of the wood, but that's okay. I'm gonna be shaping the belt anyway. So there's my belt. I don't wanna go any lower than that, but you got this weird ledge here that doesn't look realistic. So we're gonna angle that from the bottom here to where that belt goes in. And that's gonna give the illusion of the belt tucking in that material. Now, since it's a belt, you want this part to be flat. If it was a rope, you'd round it a little bit so it had a, a more three-dimensional shape. Then I adjust this so it looks right. Take off some of that. That gives you the idea of how to do the belt. And also here, I'm going to tuck this down and you can decide how much you want that coat to be kind of puffed out around the belt. So like he's squeezing his fat little belly in there or there's loose fabric or whatever. So you can do this in stages, you go back and forth between the belt and the... And don't be afraid to leave a deep knife cut around here because when you go to paint it the paint will sort of stop at that cut and it'll be easier to separate the colors so there you go that's how you would do the belt the buckle would be the same idea you would outline it you do that on all four sides You got a little triangle right there. It's very tricky because you have only a little bit of short grain and it's going to want to break out. So you have to really, really be taking your time to just do a little. Remove a little bit of wood at a time. And then if you want to flatten your belt, you can do that. Come back, take a little more of this. So the direction of the grain right now is telling me I have to go cut up, not down. Otherwise it's gonna flake off. So if I do go down, I have to go very, very lightly. And my knife has to be sharp. It's a good idea when you get to doing this delicate work that you go back and either have a fresh knife or go back and strop and have your blade cleaned up. So that's how you would do a belt. And that would be the buckle. Now, if you want to do the inside of the buckle, that's even a little more tricky because now you have a very thin amount of wood. You need a, a good sharp knife with a good point. You could even use an X-Acto blade. And what I'm doing is I'm going deeper at these corners. So I could just outline it like that and paint it differently, or I can actually take some little triangles out of the corner 
you have this broke right there. So that would have to be either change my design or lower the buckle or glue that. I would try to glue that with a little CA glue maybe. Anyway, so that's how we're gonna create the buckle shape. And I usually do this maybe in a brown or a black and then I have some gold or silver paint that I do this buckle with. So the last stage is I wanna demonstrate carving some of the hairs with this little V tool, little dockyard tool. And I re highly recommend a set of these dockyard tools. They're super sharp and they're just great for working on this scale. So before I do that, I wanna go over my whole figure and I wanna make sure I clean up all the little corners. A lot of carvers call those the fuzzies. It's just a little bit of wood that's left in the corner. So the better you get at carving, the more you learn to just sort of keep those corners nice and clean as you're carving, but there's still always some to do. Uh, when you go to paint it, they're gonna be a problem for you. The next thing is make sure there's nothing like a little flat spot that was the original block of wood or left from the, uh, the bandsaw or however you cut this out. So we're gonna just, I'm doing very small cuts, making sure the grain is going the right way, making sure my arms are rounded over, make sure the transitions between one plane and another looks good, like between the hair and this and that, okay? And then for the hair and the beard and the mustache, you want to smooth those out to the final shape that you want them to be. Because what you're going to do is you're just taking little V cuts to make the, the illusion of hair and you're not really shaping that part of the body. So, uh, And then one thing you want to do is up here where the hat meets the hair, just score that with a deep cut. That's going to do two things. One is, most importantly, when you're cutting a V into it, it'll stop there and the, piece, the chip will pop out. Otherwise, you'll get a little piece stuck in there. And then secondly, when you go to paint it, when you paint up to that, this is going to be, say, red and this will be white. The white will just come up and it'll just go down that little valley there and it won't go on to the red. It'll be much easier to separate your colors. So I'm doing that all the way around here, right there. You can even do it with the face because this is going to be red and this is going to be a flesh color. So you want that to stop. So it sort of creates like a little, a little dam in a way or a little, it's actually more like a little moat. Okay, and you can do that wherever you have two surfaces together. Also, I want to do it around the mustache because I want my little V cuts for the hairs to stop somewhere. Being very careful not to let the knife slip off and hit my finger. So now I've scored all around this whole thing. So actually that defines it, it makes it look crisper, but it, it lets me end my cut. Now, I could do this whole beard, you know, freehand, I've done a lot of these, but what I'm gonna do just to sort of guide myself is to show where the, the hairs are gonna go. So they're almost vertical here in the middle of the mustache, right here. And then they work their way out. Try to think about how hair actually goes. You could only put two or three cuts in this and it would give the impression of the hair. So you can do as many as you want. That's how that's gonna go. Now the sideburns are gonna come pretty much straight down into here. So they're gonna intersect with this and stop. That's why we put that little cut there. Again, all I'm doing, I'm not showing where I'm gonna make the cuts. I'm showing the direction of the hair. Now from here, the hair pretty much comes down. So you can go straight up and down, or sometimes I like to go like a wiggly, curvy shape like that. Makes it look a little more natural. And then gradually it straightens out. Same thing here. So now I have a little curve. So I'm gonna just, that reminds me to make my curve cuts that way. And the back hair, again, you can do straight or you can do a little wave to it, which I like to do. So all that does is give me 
sort of a starting place for my first couple cuts and then I'm going to uh, follow along. See here's a spot where the grain broke out and it's not that deep so I'm going to come back and clean that up. And then I want to accentuate that little that corner for a shadow line and then undercut here a little bit. And now it gives the impression of the arm has more roundness, round shape to it. So now I'm switching over to this dockyard tool and you can do I could do one long cut here, I could do little small cuts, lots of different ways, and how you make the beard hair uh, becomes sort of a signature of your, your style of cutting. Uh, one thing I forgot to do was make sure I cut a crisp line up there so that when I come in, see that pops out. If I don't do that, so what I like to do is I start toward the top and I'll make my cut. So now I'm doing maybe one, two, three, four, but I'll just do the top half here where it ends into that, like that. And then and I'll come down. Now, if it starts to splinter out a little bit, I know I'm going the wrong way, like that. And it could be that my tool is dull too. That's another reason. So that's tearing up a little bit. Now an alternate way to do this is you can actually do it with your knife. I'm angling, I'm on an angle like this, and then I come back, so I'm actually cutting a V like that. And that's much crisper and cleaner. So even if my V cuts don't really work out, I can come back and sort of clean that up and get a nice clean cut. All I'm doing is giving the impression of hairs. I'm not trying to cut hairs individually. Okay, so that's... And then we can also do a partial one down here at the bottom. We don't have to go all the way up with every one. Now, at the bottom of the hairs, I have a little triangle there that I want to maybe clean up. Pop that out like that so that it gives a little more of a clean ending to it. If part of that breaks off, you can always just shorten it a little bit. Here's the... Now another thing is you can go lightly and then come back again and hit it more heavily to get my hairs. I can go in here, get a little... See how I just did a small one to just give the impression of it? Now for this part, Try coming up like this. I'm doing like one long V, but I'm not doing it in one cut, if you understand what I mean. I'm just doing little sections of it at a time. And I could actually kind of stagger it like this and not go all the way up with each cut. And that looks more realistic. So it sort of looks like a hair is overlapping that way. All right. And now when I undercut here before with my straight cut, that helps that little chip to pop out of there. Now for here, I'm gonna come down where it meets it, like that. And then I wanna go somewhere like that and finish my, my cut that goes up. So when you do, if you do end partially, partially up the beard or whatever, you don't want to just stop. You want to sort of have it come out like that so it's a little feather. And then the one next to it feathers in gently. So you don't have any hard horizontal lines here. Everything's an up and down. So that's how you would do that part of it. And then the hair is the same way. You're going to just come up under there. I usually come up at the top like this. Now, if that doesn't pop out, for example, then you have to come in with your knife and just chip it out. Okay, now here, 
I have this sort of a curve. And that's the that's the hair. Now one last thing I sometimes do on this, you don't have to, that looks like hair, you know, clean out these little fuzz things. Sometimes I will take the bottom of this cut and just cut down like that. And that makes the hair look a little more natural at the bottom instead of just like a, you know, he had his hair cut with a bowl. This is just, his hair grew out and it grew out at sort of different lengths and that's much more interesting to look at. Um, the only thing is you got to watch these little triangles here. You might have to go back and just sort of clean those up with like a little slicing cut like that. You just follow along. Uh, the other knife cuts will let that piece chip out. So that's it. That's our little gnome. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button and the subscribe button and ring the little bell and do all that stuff so that you can stay in the loop with future videos. Uh, until then, happy carving. Mm -hmm.